Hi, welcome to MediatorPodcast.com, a podcast and video series about mediation, negotiation, and collaboration. My name is Melissa Gregg, and I provide online valuation, divorce, and mediation services in St. Louis, Missouri. In this week's episode, we will discuss the benefits of divorce mediation, co-parenting, child support, and future expenses with Erica England. She's a family law attorney in California, a trained divorce mediator, and founder of Divorceably. Currently, she's also the CSO of Support Pay, maybe even just talking about some benefits, like the benefits of divorce mediation in these types of matters, because I don't think everybody totally understands it. My secret, and I am willing to share this with all professionals because I really wish more people got into mediation. My secret is the first question I ask people when they come in to consult with me is, what interests you in divorce mediation as opposed to litigation or doing it yourself? And maybe they'll say, we don't want to put our children through a court process, or we want to do what's fair, but we don't know how to do it. Or we have some disagreements, but ultimately we would like to be the people resolving these Sometimes they say we want a faster process, a cheaper process. We, we need privacy. Maybe they're just regular everyday people or perhaps they're really high profile people that need complete privacy. So it's a different reason for everyone. But I, as a professional, always like to find out what it is first so I can tailor my pitch to that. And then at any point that the mediation is going awry, I can always like gently circle them back to ask them how that works in alignment with their goal of whatever, whatever they but, stated at the outset. Yeah, no. And, and I think that sometimes, you know, you've probably found this, that you actually need to reinforce those goals. Sometimes every mediation, mm -hmm. every session that you have with a couple, um, because it is easy to get into, um, the blame game or get into, you know, looking at the minutia, right. Instead of the bigger picture is yes. And some things we're going to have to agree, you know, it's not going to be, we're not gonna be happy about it, but it's going to be the best kind of situation. Do you think a lot of people when they're getting into mediation are really focused on, kind of the co-parenting piece um, or, you know, is it always the children or is it always the money or what do you think is so, kind of the central theme? Ooh, and usually I don't even know if those things can be disentangled because they're just both about emotion and value and priorities and fear and security. So I found many of my clients that were parents really we're afraid of the idea of handing over the authority of decision-making to somebody else. And even though they had a disagreement with their spouse, when it came down to it, they didn't want to give up the power to a courtroom evaluator, an attorney, uh, an attorney for the children, a judge. As a parent, I think that one of the things that we really try to do is make decisions that we feel like are well thought out and conscientious for our kids. So there's something about mediation that's quite reassuring to people because they believe ultimately that they're good decision makers and they should be the people who do it. There's certainly a financial component and in mediation what I find is it's not so much that people are fighting, but rather that they kind of just don't know how to get from A to Z. Mm -hmm. So you've got a pension and I have a 401k plan. What do we do? What is a fair, reasonable thing to do? What meets our goals? And that's just a lot of fun to work with. Yeah, and I think that they, they get a little confused um, even like how to go about the process because they're talking to their friends and they're like, oh, well, in this situation, they got full custody. Oh, in this situation, they paid 
$10,000 of maintenance. Oh, in this situation, you know, and they're hearing all these stories. But when you go back to your point at the beginning, which is if, if 80, 90, 95% of cases settle on the courtroom steps, um, why? You know, and if they're settling, how do you then just sort of bypass that whole process and say, okay, if we if if we're going to settle it anyway, we're going to agree in some capacity, you know, then then how do we do that before we have to get all the way down that path where we're maybe not even happy with each other anymore? Mm -hmm.